Ist dir nahe, kann schon yeah. Kann schon, ist dir nahe, kann schon yeah. Kann schon Come on in and have a seat Tell me who you want to meet Tell it is a rodeo Reaching everyone you know Ist dir nahe, kann schon yeah. Kann schon, ist dir nahe Do you guys know what's coming up? I can't hear you. Do you guys know what's coming up? It's Halloween. Time to scare you. Peekaboo. Did I scare you? Well, I hope I did. Today we have some amazing guests on the show. Well, let's welcome out my guests. Wait, before we start this video, I want you to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Well, let's bring out the guests. So who are you guys Caleb, Genesis, Dale, LeVar. So, how did you guys start the mentoring program? So, um, it was just an initiative of mine to try to give back to the youth and give them an opportunity to learn things that they don't normally learn, like outside of school, outside of sports. So I thought this would be something different. And also it came um, by way of uh, having a loss of a friend, and it became a, just a mission of mine to start this chess club along with a, a couple other friends. Awesome. So what are the issues you see with kids today? Well, uh, the issues I see is that, one, they don't have different opportunities that are afforded to them um, outside, again, like I say, just regular sports and music and stuff like that. So my whole mission with my chess club is critical thinking. We want them to use their brains and develop uh, different ideas by way of uh, exercise and thoughts that they have and just imagination. Too. Awesome. So how does chess help with mentoring? How does chess help with mentoring? Yes. So, I mean, there's a few different benefits that you can get from playing chess, from building, uh, building your confidence, your social skills, um, having the kids build like a, a network of friends and having the opportunity to learn different personalities. And then also one of the big things that comes with chess is the same way you move the chess pieces around as you get to know the chess pieces and how they operate and how they move, it's the same way people in your life move. You know, from your friends to your parents to your teachers to just regular associates, even enemies. You know, um, you just learn how to move about life when you really focus on the game of chess. It, it really relates to life. Yeah. Yeah. You have to use your brain a lot. Like, if you make a wrong move, uh, your uh, player can get taken. It's very fun, though. I like chess because it's very challenging. I'm competitive. So, I like to play the game a lot. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chess has been beneficial to me because it's been like always been fun and I get to meet new people and it's and have and meet new friends and it's been very, very intense. I I may never win a championship but eh, I'm alright with it. Oh you will. <laughs> you will. Chess has beneficial me um, with problem solving skills because it helps me analyze how to problem solve in life, not just for the game. And so it's like it helps you like analyze what your move is to think about if you do this, how could that affect your opponent? And so it kind of helps you like in the real world to think about before what you act or do and how it's going to affect others. How long have you guys usually been playing? Mm. About three months, maybe. I'd say about two months. About a month. Maybe. Yeah, we officially started the chess club in uh, on July 14th. That was our first actual meeting this awesome. past summer. That's something. Welcome. So, <coughs> does the kids sometimes compete compete while playing chess? Absolutely. Every week within our chess club, we have um, about 20 to 30 kids total. And, you know, every week is, is a different amount of kids that are going to show up. So we have an instructional um, lesson each week that we go over, whether they're learning something new, whether it's chess moves, um, whether it's just some type of relation, uh, uh, correlation that they have to life. Um, and then after that, we play a tournament, a weekly tournament, and we have one winner. And then each winner is awarded with, you know, different things and different prizes. You guys are really, really good. <laughs> yes. So how could kids join the program? 
So they can show up any Sunday. We do this every Sunday from 2 to 4 um, at 8200 uh, Wilcrest, and it's in the heart of A-Leaf, and we're at uh, the Texan Wobble Wings, and it's a free program. They show up, they play, they compete. You know, we have a whole registration that we go through. You know, we get to know them, and then we're going to meet them where they are. It doesn't matter if they know how to play chess, never heard of chess, they're experts at chess, you know, so we just want them to get involved and, uh, you know, just come and support the chess club. Oh, that's really, really good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So how many youth has your program reached? Man, so like I said, right now on my roster, I have actually 30 kids um, active on the roster. You know, every week, everybody can't come every week, and that's fine. You know, we're, we know about um, everybody's schedule is going to be different. So outside of the 30 on my um, roster, I would say I've touched probably about 50 total, you know, somewhere between 50 and 60 because there's a lot of kids that don't even come into the chess club because the mentoring goes outside of that, which is another thing. That's the first mentoring uh, program that I have in the chess club and there's another a number of other ones that we're going to start like uh, you like yourself entrepreneurship you know different things that we're going to do with the kids by way of mentoring <laughs> well you know a chess game can be over in a matter of two moves actually you know um, if you're an expert or what they call a game master um, you can end the get chess game really quick but on average you're going to say anywhere from you know 10 to maybe as much as 20 minutes, you know, it just, it's intense, it just depends on the players. Cool, so I heard you guys were going to play chess today. Yes ma'am, we are. Okay, let's get into the game. <laughs> let the chess tournament begin. All right, so what they're doing now is uh, demonstrating what we call the opening uh, part of the chess game. And then um, there's an end point to it, which we call castling. And castling is where you're basically trying to ultimately protect your king from getting captured. And it's just like it says, it's in a castle. It'll be surrounded by a number of pieces to where it's fully protected is what that. And it's just one of the strategies that you can use. Um, you don't have to castle in the game. Um, again, it's just one of the strategies that we've learned uh, throughout the process of just teaching them so that they can develop their own ideas of how they want to play. When they're when they're utilizing um, the chessboard. So what are you guys doing right now? We're trying to castle. Well, I'm trying to castle. I I have I had the chance to castle. It's it's just his turn. All right. So now, what you'll see him do already is you move your king over two spaces, and then the rook comes on the opposite side of the king. And so now the king, once this piece is captured, then the game is over. So what he's doing is taking the opportunity to empty out his power pieces. You wanna focus on those when you play the game of chess, put them in play so that way he can start to attack. So now this is technically the end part of what you call the opening game of the chess. Um, and so now the king is surrounded by a number of his pieces so he doesn't have to worry about his king getting taken right now. And so that's basically what he's just accomplished by castling. And if you look on the other side, the other opponent has the option to do that as well if he wants to utilize that, that technique. He can, but he doesn't, he needs to get his king, queen, I mean, and his horse out the way. Absolutely, y'all keep playing, you go. And so as they, um, as he castles now, you'll see the other opponent castle, so around four and four second, and so, what we're doing is just demonstrating that it's not always going to be these moves that you see when they go to castle, but that's just one of the strategies we wanted to demonstrate. And so now at this point, they've reached what you call the mid game. And so now they really go into the part of the game where they're using their own brains and their own strategy, their own techniques to actually take out each other's at this point. So who usually wins while playing chess? Well, it can only be one person um, or it can be a, a stalemate. Yeah, and so it just depends who's who makes the, the right moves all the time. It's not always the best player either. You know, the best player is not going to always be the person that wins. It's going to be the person who's thinking the best at the time. Awesome. Do you guys play chess often? Mm-hmm. Mm Okay. And I just took his queen, so. And so 
as you see, he took the option to take his queen with one of his other power pieces. And it's always about when you make a move, you want to make sure that your next move is protected. That's one of the main things. Mm -hmm. And at this point in the game is where it gets tricky because everybody's pieces are in play. You know, and so when your pieces are in play, you have to really look around the board. And so another thing we didn't really talk about in the beginning are the names of the pieces too. So these are your pawns right here. They line up across the, put it down for me. They line up across the front line. Um, and then you have your rooks. And the pawns can, uh, when they start off, they can move forward two spaces or just one, you know, and they just go forward. So with pawns, you may hear in life people say they're using me as a pawn because pawns just only have one option uh, necessarily. They can't go back, they only go forward. And so those are the ones that get sacrificed a lot and normally get taken first. Um, but you can use a pawn and the way we use pawns in the game of chess related to life is that if you keep moving as a pawn and you get across, if this pawn gets all the way across to this side, of course this, this piece would have to be out the way, then this pawn can become a queen. And so the point of that is that if you keep moving forward in life, you can become what you need to become. And so that's just one of the quick lessons that we do as he puts his pieces back, you know. So there's 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 definitely meanings to everything in the game of chess, and you just gotta watch how you move. And um, so the horse, it moves in an L shape. This is the only piece that can jump over other pieces, okay? And so you got those thinkers who just think ahead of the game. You know, they're always two steps ahead. It's like my son, sir, say, um, sometimes you're just ahead of the game. And that's what the horse does. But you have to be careful because you don't be just jumping all around, you know, in life. You want to make sure that all your moves you're making strategically. Awesome. So where can we guys follow you at? So we're on Instagram at um, Dad Chronicles, and that's D-A-D-K-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S. Um, we have a Facebook page. And we have a uh, chess club group on the Facebook page as well. You know, so we're on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us Dad Chronicles. Awesome. It's the Anaya Kind Show A. Dream big. Nothing is impossible. Bye.